everybody, and welcome to Let's Play Chrono Trigger DS. I'm gonna let the intro on the top screen just play there. The bottom screen just says touch to start, so there's something there. Um, this is an obviously D for DS, a port of speak that of yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> Sorry, of the uh, SNES game Chrono Trigger, uh, which also got a release on the PS1. Uh, this is probably more closer to the PS1 version uh, because the anime cutscenes have been maintained, which were not in the SNES version. Uh, it's a great, great RPG, by the way. Um, I know I'm the biggest fan of RPGs. This is what made me actually go back and appreciate them more uh, for several reasons, which I'll go into as I play the game. Um, if you do not own this game, I strongly suggest you play it because it is just awesome. Anyway, compared to the uh, uh, original SNES version, there have been some changes to the game. Uh, there's more content added, obviously the aforementioned uh, anime scenes from the PS1 version. Um, there's also more uh, current and post-game content. Um, a lot of the, some of the dialogue has been updated, and I feel generally it's better written. Um, nothing really drastically has changed about it. It just it just feels better written, like, you know, the gist of everything is pretty much the same. Uh, a lot of techniques and a lot of items have been uh, given new names, some of which are better, some of which I think the original was better. Um, since I have played the original Antigonus version, a bite or wrong of it, uh, I will occasionally get them mixed, uh, yeah. Get, get the terms mixed up, and for this, I apologize. Usually it'll be obvious what I'm referring to, so hopefully you won't get too confused there, because then you'll find out some of the original terms did sound better. And damn, this intro was long! There's also spoilers contained in it, by the way, which is kind of awesome yet just funny at the same time. It's kind of like one of those things in like a movie trailer, where something is spoiled, but you have no idea what the hell it is until you actually encountered it because you've completely forgotten about him at that point. Uh, case in point with, um... Press for Glory 5. They literally spoiled half the plot in the game in the intro, but by the time you actually get to the plot... <laughs> you've completely forgotten about it! Until you remember it again. Now right here is where the original, uh, SNES intro was started. Now this is going to be an interesting game to LP because obviously the split screen aspect, I'm only going to be showing one screen at a time and obviously stopping uh, slightly longer than usual to, to allow for a transitioning between the screens before I continue. So now we're going to go ahead and hit start and now we transition to the bottom screen where we have new game, low game, extras, and the arena. Um, if you've actually not started a game file before, obviously load game will, I don't think load game appears, and arena will not appear. The arena actually is new, and it appears very on early, uh, early on in the game. Um, basically it's kind of like a monster fighting kind of thing. I'm not going to be doing that because, number one, I never did that on my DS car, and number two, I suck and I'm not really interested in that sort of thing. Um, extras is going to be pretty much useless until you, uh, progress through your game file because it's going to show um, like the bestiary and the music and things like that but they will not actually show up until you actually get to that point on the game file so we're going to go ahead and start a new game uh, top screen is just basically going to show you just pointless info now back on the bottom here we get classic mode and we get DS mode if we go into DS mode um, Basically, your commands are going to show up on the touch screen. You can still, you know, hit the A button to input them, but you can also use the touch screen. With the classic mode, all it's going to show is the monster information on the bottom, and the attacks are executed on the top screen, as in the original SNES version. We're going to go with that so you guys can see what the hell I'm doing. Uh, the battle mode, usually when I play, I set it to active. Uh, basically, what that means is during uh, your t your character's turn while you're selecting your commands, time in the battle continues on. So um, other characters will get will continue to have their turns, um, or the time between the turns start to fill up, and enemies can act while you're 
uh, in the middle of scrolling through menus. When you have it on wait, as soon as you select a command, but before you execute it, time in the battle is paused. Uh, which is kind of helpful for certain boss fights where, you know, time may be of the essence in when and how you attack. So I'm going to set it to wait just because in the beginning of the game it's easier to explain what the hell I'm doing and that way I'm not going to be distracted by my own commentary as much. Uh, later on in the game I may set that back to active. And I probably will. Movies! Um, you can turn the anime cutscenes either on or off. I'm going to turn them on. Because they're cool. So that being said, let's start. And here we can select our character's name! Chrono! Yay! Now, I'm not going to rename any of the characters in this game because I think my opinion is with games that have character, uh, where playable characters actually have distinctive personalities, I don't like to rename them because I feel the name is a part of them. Uh, obviously in some, you know, games where there's either only one protagonist or, you know, it doesn't, the personality of the protagonist doesn't really actually play a crucial role in the game. Um, like things such as like the Pokemon games and stuff like that, obviously you're going to take the same path regardless of your character's name and what you do, so. So, everyone's going to keep their name as is. And it's only seven minutes in, and we finally actually do something. Now, that's either gunshots or fireworks, but judging by the balloons, it's probably more likely to be fireworks. And damn, they are loud. And I'm not going to voice act this because I'm terrible at such things. It's our mom. I thought, oh, look, we have a kitty. And we still have our mom wake us up. Even though we are clearly a teenager. And the kitty's gonna go downstairs too before we can move. Oh. What is it about RPGs and the protagonist is either 10 years old or is a teenager? Why can no one else ever save the world? Anyway, let's stop here for one second. Obviously, the top screen continues to play the role it did in the original version. Uh, the bottom screen now, obviously, is the touch screen. Uh, you can... Unfortunately, this is the only way to execute uh, getting into menus in this game. Um, I'm going to use my mouse for the, for the bottom screen. Um, obviously you're not going to tend to see much because um, I'm not going to be using the bottom screen as much. Obviously we have a map there. and um, This one is already filled out but usually it doesn't fill out until as you explore certain areas. And obviously the giant arrow there is where you are. So let's just show off the menu here. Obviously we got our HP and MP uh, for our character. We have our equipment screen. Yay! And you can add uh, the water screen also now has the, uh, the icons that you had before. So the first one is kind of useless. Um, these obviously the rest of these seven are on the uh, the bottom screen too. So the top one, right, right one, the top left one. Sorry that I just clicked there is kind of useless. But basically we have our equipment. Uh, on the bottom here, we can actually change it, and at the top is where our actual our stats go in. And you, uh, so yeah, and you have your item screen, and obviously we have no consumable items, but the L and R buttons can change which menu you want to access. They're all separated, which is kind of sweet. You have. Um, basically a list of your text for your available characters. Some techniques can be used out of battle, such as healing techniques. Um, this is where you would use them outside of battle. And BCRA, which currently has nothing in it. 
but basically you can see their stats and everything like that, So, which is pretty handy. Obviously you have to see the monster in battle. Uh, change the game settings, which this time it has more available settings than originally. I don't know why they only showed three basic settings at the beginning. Uh, battle speed, young, yeah, I'm gonna keep that as normal. Uh, top screen is just gonna show it's basically just a summary of what you selected. Uh, battle cursor summary, ooh. I'm keep that on actions for now, I can't think of what that does. Uh, battle gauges. I'm gonna keep that on type A for now. Help message is off because we don't need that shit. And you can actually change your control scheme. Which I'm not going to do. Uh, default movement. Oh, I forgot about this. Um, usually in the original game, the default movement is on walk. If you hold the B button, sorry, little we'll hiccup there, you'll actually run on the overworld screen. But you can set it to run instead, which is very faster because there's very few areas in the game where you actually is more beneficial to walk, in which case if you're running and you hold the B button, then you can actually walk. Uh, shortcuts I'm not going to worry about. Uh, menu cursor memory, I'm going to put that to on. Uh, window design, and basically you can modify it. I'm going to keep it on the main one. So yeah, in here we can, uh, the, the yeah, this one right here, you can actually change your party members. Unfortunately, I have no other party members, so that function is going to be useless for a while. And to save, you need to, be, you need to be on a save spot or in the overworld to actually save your game. But anyway, one thing you can do in your room is you can uh, open and shut the curtains. Uh, we can't get any now, but this dish will um, optionally contain cat food. We'll get into that later. So let's go downstairs. Oh, we have a friend! Oh, oh why am I yawning? Jeez. And her name is Luca, and she's got an ugly hat that I always hated. Oh, she's an inventor! Another RPG cliche. If you talk to your kitty, he meows. Or she. It's never elaborated. So talk to your mother again. And we get 200 gold! I know it says G, but for all intents and purposes, it's gold. And unfortunately, you can't do anything in the kitchen, like you can't read what's written on the fridge or anything like that. Which kind of sucks. So this is our house right here. Bardo's house, yay! Obviously that will change if you change the name of your character. So let's walk around town and just talk to people. Ooh, a thousand years old! This is the kingdom of Guardia. And apparently he has a daughter. I know the dialogue just said that, but... And one interesting thing I should mention here. Why are the clocks on the walls and on RPGs either set at 3 o'clock or 9 o'clock? Have you ever noticed that? And occasionally they're also set to like noon or 6 o'clock. But, but why? Just why? A friend there. Wow, that's kind of depressing, actually. Let's go to the market. There's not going to be anything useful, useful for us here because they're all at the fair. Ooh, the mayor's house. Nice. Um, sure. Apparently the mirror functions as a library kind of thing. Yeah, we're not going to be using the touch screen, so screw that. Yeah, basically it's kind of just a mini tutorial house. Um, no. No. Basically, the menu shortcuts are just the buttons on the eight buttons on the side of the bottom screen there. Yeah, basically. Oh, yeah. That's right! I forgot about that. Now, this is what a, say, this little sparkle is what a safe point looks like. Okay, yeah, I already talked to you. Okay. I want to talk to the other girl. Yay! But 
that's kind of, yeah, that is kind of interesting. Um, yeah, we'll get into shelters later. No, I want to talk, no, I already talked to you, never mind. Let's go upstairs. Man, this car is crowded. Yeah, house is crowded. Ugh. Um, no, we can learn about text and battle. Uh, no, I don't care about battle commands. Um, sure, why not? I'm gonna have to sneeze. Um, basically, this is status ailments aren't really that um, prominent in this game, um, but they're slightly different than um, other RPGs. So I'm gonna show this off. Yeah, like most RPGs, when you get when you sleep and get hit, you uh, wake up again, which is cool. Uh, another thing about Confuse 2 is it lowers your accuracy and it lowers your attack. So even regardless of who you successfully attack, even if it's the actual enemy you want to be targeted, you're going to do significantly less damage and you're likely to also miss. Yeah, you don't get blinded or locked in the, uh, much in this game. Or stop, for that matter. And, sure, what do you want to tell me? Yes, we know. I actually never, ever run away from battles in this game. There's a few of them I tend to avoid at times, but... And I wasn't paying attention to half of that. And let's just show this off. Yada yada yada! It's basically just telling you whatever it's told you. Alright, let's talk to the mayor. Who's this guy right here? Um, sure. And we get a hundred gold for opening that chest. Basically, right in front of the guy's nose, we stole it. Aren't we awesome? Our protagonist, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Trucin, okay. Let me move. Hey, baby. Um, sure, we'll be nice. Oh, and you get to hear some other tracks in the game while you, by doing that. In several ends of the game, actually. Oh, she wants to go to the fair. Uh, no, we haven't been. Hey. No. Uh, basically that will just heal your HP and MP, and you'll actually see yourself sleeping in this lovely bed, along with other party members. Hmm. The mysterious force seals it shut. Remember that for much later, guys. Um, no. Why is it important? Who the hell cares? Anyway, you can actually explore a little of the overworld, but there's really not much point in doing that. You don't get access to any, like, um, other early... Actually, one thing I can show off. Most of the dialogue from characters early in the game right now is just talking about the fair. If we go down the Zenon Bridge here, you can actually see people, um, from the southern continent, actually. Get off my character! Running to the fair. And basically you'll just see the same few characters over and over again. They'll just repeat themselves across this bridge, so... You could actually cross the bridge either in the overworld or in the scene there. Uh, I think most of the people on the continent below down here, way in the corner here, they just talk about the fair and everything right now. I also have this kind of deserty area for much later as well. So, actually, ooh! thing I can do that I almost completely forgot about here. If we go down this little island here, this is Lucas' house. 
And it's a total mess. Let's raid her kitchen! No, that's not a cool thing to do. This is actually Lucas' bedroom, by the way. And we can go to the master bedroom, which only has one bed in it. Oh, why aren't you at the fair? Now, one disappointing thing about this right here, this is obviously Lara, this is uh, Luca's mother. Um, it's never really explained until later in our game. Um, it's kind of retcon, so to speak. Um, the reason she's sitting there and she's not the fair herself, she actually is, for all intents and purposes, kind of paralyzed. So she kind of can't come to the fair by herself, which is kind of sad, and I wish they actually even had a throwaway line describing that. I mean, like I said, later on in the game, you do find out more about it, but at that point, it's like, you should have just told me in the first place. Oh, and if, obviously, if you stay at the overworld long enough, the time period actually appears, and your characters will get kind of angry at you like this. Anyway, um, I've gone on for this for like 20 minutes now, so next time we'll actually explore the Millennial Fair at Lean Square. See you next time, folks.